Mechanical keyboards, something that we geeks actually take quite a bit of pride in, even though they generally tend to annoy our desk mates. The clickety clack of these keyboards can be heard all the way down the hall, but we just love these keyboards. They're awesome. And one thing that I know for sure is that there's quite a few fans of mechanical keyboards within my audience. You guys take this subject very seriously, and I don't blame you. I love mechanical keyboards too. And today, it's time to review the brand new member of the Launch keyboard family, the Launch Heavy. I first saw this model at All Things Open in Raleigh, North Carolina, where a near final prototype was there on display. And now I have the finished product right here in the studio ready for review. And in this video, I'm going to give you guys a full review. I have the new Launch Heavy right here in the studio, and I can't wait to give you guys my thoughts. In fact, I have two of these keyboards in the studio today. Now, if you are wondering why I have two Launch Heavies in the studio today, well, I'll let you know later in the review. But before we get into that, I need to give you guys a quick disclaimer, and then we'll get started. Even though System76 sent the Launch Heavy keyboard to the studio for me to review, all of the thoughts and opinions in this video are strictly my own. Even though it was super awesome of them to provide the review unit that most of this review is based on, that doesn't excuse them from receiving constructive criticism. After all, the focus on this channel is to be fair, but more importantly, to be honest. So what you're going to get is an honest and unbiased review, just like always. And also, I'll have time codes in the description down below, so that way you can go right to the section that most interests you. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's talk about what this product is, as well as its intended audience. The launch keyboard itself is not new, it's existed for a little while now. In fact, I reviewed the original launch keyboard some time ago on this channel, and it actually became my keyboard of choice. And you've seen it in the background of every video I've recorded since then. Launch keyboards are manufactured by System76, which is staffed by people that take keyboards very seriously, as well as other things that they're obsessed about. And for the most part, I think they did a very good job here. They even gave us PBT keycaps, which are very durable, and I couldn't take them seriously if they didn't. Now, although launch keyboards aren't breathtaking when it comes to appearance, they have a more basic design that actually still manages to look good, but the focus is on functionality. They're super customizable, even to the point where there's a dedicated app for customizing this keyboard if you were to order one. And I'll be showing this app later in the video. When I reviewed the original model, one of the primary criticisms that you guys had was you didn't appreciate the lack of a numpad. But this time around, the Launch Heavy does indeed have a numpad. Now having a numpad isn't actually something that's important to me. It's not something that I use all that often. But you know what? I know a lot of you guys out there care a lot about that, especially you gamers. So it was a big deal for you to have a numpad on your mechanical keyboard. And now with the Launch Keyboard, you can actually have a numpad. And that's the primary difference with this model, the Launch Heavy. There's a numpad now. So it looks more like a complete keyboard than the other models, which were, well, more compact. Another criticism of the original model was its price. And that's definitely something that I'll be covering in today's video. But first, let's take a look around the Launch Keyboard. From the moment that you take it out of the box, it actually feels a bit on the heavy side. Specifically, heavy in regard to weight. Now, the previous model did as well. It felt like a thick sheet of metal. The new model feels exactly the same, but with the numpad, it's even heavier than the other models. However, the build quality is pretty much exactly the same, and that's a good thing. One of the standout features of the Launch Keyboard line is the presence of a USB hub. And this isn't one of those cheap and slow USB 2 hubs. The Launch Keyboard features USB 3.2 Generation 1 ports, specifically two of each between USB Type-A and USB Type-C. I'll discuss the USB hub more specifically later in the review. So, how's the typing experience? Well, first of all, there's four different switch types that you could choose between if you were to order a keyboard for yourself. The review unit that was set into the studio was the version with the Jade switches. On the order page, they'll have the switches shown as clicky, tactile, silent tactile, and also silent linear. Due to that, your typing experience will depend on your choice. My original launch keyboard was the tactile format, but I figured that the Jade version would be a fun difference from what I was used to. And you know what? The typing experience is absolutely fantastic, so I have no complaints when it comes to that. By now, you've probably noticed the split spacebar. In the original review, some people in the comments were very unsure of that aspect because to some of you it seems kind of weird. But think of it this way. 
When it comes to the keyboard that you are currently using, do you press the space bar on the left side, the right side, or in the middle? Well, I have a feeling that most of you actually don't press your space bar in the middle. So while it might seem a bit strange, the split space bar, in my opinion, makes no difference whatsoever, at least not to me. As I got used to the keyboard, it probably took me around 10 minutes to get accustomed to the split space bar, but after that, I don't even think I've noticed it at all. So for me, when it comes to the split space bar, it doesn't factor in as a positive or a negative. I don't think my typing experience is any better for having a split space bar, but it's also not any worse either. It's pretty much exactly the same. Another feature that's worth pointing out is that the launch keyboards, as well as this new model, feature a backlight under the keys. You might not think that this is a big deal. I mean, don't most mechanical keyboards have backlit keys nowadays? Well, yeah. But for us Linux users, support for that is very hit or miss. Mostly miss. Most companies that manufacture mechanical keyboards don't even try to make it possible for Linux users to adjust the backlight. But with launch keyboards, Linux is not only supported, I'd call it a first-class citizen. But actually, macOS and Windows are also receiving first-class support with this keyboard because those operating systems are supported as well. And that's a great thing, regardless of which operating system you intend on using with this keyboard, you're covered. And I think the really awesome thing about that is even though System76's claim to fame is selling Linux computers, they don't assume that you're running Linux if you buy a launch keyboard. Even if you're not a Linux user, you'll have full access to the full functionality of this keyboard. In fact, let's take a look at the configuration process right now. For the launch keyboards, there's a dedicated application called the System76 Keyboard Configurator. Well, that's definitely an interesting name. So basically what you'll do if you order this keyboard for yourself is download the version of the application that fits your operating system. And using that app, you can implement all kinds of tweaks. For example, you can remap the keys, change the LED pattern, as well as the color, you name it. One of the first changes I made was to disable the F1 key. I have no idea why, but for some strange reason, I'm constantly hitting the F1 key and activating help on accident. And I'm not just talking about this particular keyboard. I'd make that same mistake on every keyboard. So for example, maybe I'm typing something in Vim and then all of a sudden the help screen appears. It appears because again, I hit the F1 key on accident and I do that all the time. I gave up trying to train myself to stop hitting the F1 key by mistake. And with the launch keyboard, I can literally disable that key. Also, if I don't like the order that the control alt function and super keys are in, I can remap them. And using the included key puller, I can physically rearrange the keys to match whatever I configure in the app. In fact, the launch keyboard comes with some alternate keys in the box, some of which are alternate color versions of the primary keys. So you could basically rearrange the keys however you'd like and then update your config in the configurator app to match the physical layout. In addition, there are several layers when it comes to the keys, and you could think of layers as alternate key maps. Using Configurator, you could change the LED color of each layer, that way it'll be obvious which one is active. There's actually a second layer configured right out of the box. If I hold Function, the purpose of some of the keys will immediately change. For example, the Page Up and Page Down become Volume Up and Volume Down on that second layer. Also, Zero, Hyphen, and Equal become LED Toggle, LED Darken, and LED Brighten, respectively. Another aspect of the launch keyboard that I quite like is that any changes that you make are saved right into the keyboard itself. And this means that you won't have to have the Configurator app running in order to make sure that your changes are in effect. Even if you plug the keyboard into a completely different computer, your settings will literally follow the keyboard. You could also export your settings to back them up and even import a colleague's settings to see how someone else might have configured theirs. One common question that I get is whether or not you could purchase your own keys from a third party and really go crazy. The short answer is yes, you can absolutely buy third-party keys to take customization of this keyboard to the next level. However, there's going to be some asterisks here. Specifically, some of the keys on the launch keyboard are a custom, non-standard size. Most of the keys are universal though, so even if a few of the keys may not be a standard size, that doesn't really stop you from customizing the keyboard. In fact, I went ahead and played around with this myself, as you can see right here. I was able to customize quite a bit of it. Now, if you're curious about the specs of the keys, that way you can order the correct keycaps from a third party, I'll leave information that I received from System76 on the screen right now that might help you figure out which ones to order. I'll also leave a link in the description down below for the keycaps that I ordered for mine. So let's talk a bit more about the built-in USB hub. Having USB ports built into the keyboard is really nice, 
And I'm especially thankful that System76 didn't cheap out and implement a USB 2.0 hub. Believe it or not, some of the more popular mechanical keyboards out there still feature USB 2 ports, even to this day. And that's if they even include a USB hub at all. A lot of them don't. So having USB 3.2 ports on the keyboard is definitely a plus. Speaking of USB, I'd be remiss if I didn't test the performance of the built-in hub. Specifically, does it become a bottleneck when you plug in something like a USB hard drive or flash drive? Does it impact transfer speed at all? So in order to test that, I plugged in an external SSD, and then I ran the command that you see on the screen right now. Sure, it's not going to be a 100% exact metric, but it will give us a close enough approximation. And as you can see, I'd say the speed is pretty good. Of course, keep in mind that it's always possible that the device that you're plugging in could itself be a bottleneck. At least once, I accidentally plugged in this keyboard to a USB 2 port on accident while wondering why my transfer speeds were so slow. When I corrected the situation by plugging in the keyboard to a USB 3 port, well, everything was solved. So as long as you make sure to plug in this keyboard into the proper port with a proper cable, then you shouldn't have any issues when it comes to performance. So far, the Launch Heavy keyboard seems like a slam dunk. And you know what? It actually is. It's a very awesome keyboard. In fact, I liked it enough to where I bought my own, which actually came in right before I hit the record button. So now I have one of my very own that I bought with my own money. However, there were a few concerns that I had with this keyboard that I'm going to tell you about right now. And the first concern is how difficult it is to find a matching palm rest for this keyboard. Whenever I use a keyboard, I prefer a palm rest of some sort. It just feels more comfortable to me. And these are very easy to find on sites like Amazon, among others. When you purchase a palm rest for any mechanical keyboard, you basically just choose the one that matches its length. Usually, there's about three different standard choices when it comes to the length of the palm rest. With the launch keyboard that I reviewed last time, I purchased a few palm rests to try out, and I did so without putting any thought into it. The ones that I ordered were a perfect match. So, I guess that means that the original launch keyboard was the standard size. However, when it comes to the launch heavy, literally none of the palm rests on Amazon, not a single one, were a fit. And this could only mean that the Launch Heavy is of a non-standard size. For this review, I purchased three palm rests to try out, and I tried to get as close as I possibly could to the length of the keyboard when I ordered them. But none of them were an exact match. So this means that if you do use a palm rest of this keyboard, it's going to look a little strange since there's going to be an extra inch or two on either side. And this is a little puzzling to me because I feel like System76 is normally spot on when it comes to attention to detail. So I find it a bit strange and even a little embarrassing that the width of this keyboard doesn't seem to fit any known palm rest that I could find. Sure, I could get a saw and change the width of my wooden palm rest myself, but considering how poorly I did in woodshop class back in school, I'm not going to attempt that. Anyway, when it comes to the Launch Heavy not fitting any industry standard palm rest size, I just can't imagine what the mindset was. My previous model seemed to fit a standard size palm rest, so why doesn't this one? Another downside is the price. Previously, I used the Logitech G915, and that keyboard cost about the same as the original launch keyboard that I reviewed, but that keyboard didn't have the flexibility this one has when it comes to customization. And not only that, the G915 doesn't feature PBT keycaps, which means that in less than a week of usage, that keyboard looked very worn down. So paying the same price as the G915 for a keyboard that had more customization and higher quality keycaps, that seemed like a no-brainer to me. But I did mention the price as a downside, and the reason for that is because the Launch Heavy costs more than its counterparts. An extra $100 to be exact. This puts the Launch Heavy at $299 US dollars. As much as I love this keyboard, an extra $100 for an additional 3 or 4 inches of keys doesn't quite add up to me. Another minor annoyance is that some of the keys are of a non-standard size, like I mentioned earlier. Not many, but those few other keys might be a bit of a process to find replacements for. But even with that minor issue, this keyboard is the most customizable in general than any I've ever used in the past. Now, earlier in the review, I mentioned that I have two of these keyboards in the studio. One of them was sent to the studio by System76 for me to review, and the other I purchased with my own money. So yeah, even though I find the price to be on the steep side, I really do like this keyboard, and I like having more keys that I can customize, so even though I don't use a numpad, I can actually find use for the numpad. I have more keys to customize, so that means more options. Also, I want to support a company that's giving me a first-class citizen experience with a professional keyboard without someone having to reverse engineer it in their spare time and put it up on GitHub. 
So there's definitely a lot to love about this keyboard, and again, I love it enough to where I bought one for myself. But to be fair, I have a bit of an unfair advantage when it comes to justifying my purchase. I own a business, so it's easy for me to consider the cost difference to be part of my own production costs for producing this video. For everyone else, let's just say that significant other approval when it comes to the cost of a keyboard maxes out at around $150, and any price beyond that generally involves buying cheesecake. So, should you order a launch heavy keyboard? Well, I really do like this keyboard a lot. In fact, it's my favorite keyboard of any keyboard that I've ever tried. As a Linux user, I have first class support when it comes to the configurator app that you use to configure this keyboard. And macOS and Windows users aren't left out, which means that System76, despite being primarily a Linux company, they don't discriminate, and I think that's awesome. The keyboard itself feels like a premium product, and well, it is. The build quality is awesome, I love the customization, it's very satisfying to type on, and I love the USB hub that's included as well. However, I did bring up some downsides. One of those was the fact that this particular keyboard doesn't fit standard palm rest, and that's a little annoying to me because using a palm rest is very important to me. Also the price, it costs $299, so this keyboard is an investment. Now I do feel that if you do invest in this keyboard, you will not regret your purchase. It is very, very awesome. I love it. But you have to make that choice for yourself if $299 is too much to pay for a keyboard. I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, what did you guys think of this review and the Launch Heavy keyboard? Let me know in the comments down below. And in the meantime, make sure that you're subscribed to Learn Linux TV because I have some awesome content coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.